It finally happened. The shoe surgeon got sued. That's right, Dominique Ciambrone, AKA the shoe surgeon, is being sued by Goyard Paris for trademark infringement. In today's episode, we are gonna be going through this case as well as talking about some of the questions I've seen crop up on the numerous posts about this case, including things like, if he was using authentic Goyard materials, how can he be getting sued? Isn't he just a sneaker customizer? He does this stuff all the time with big brands like Gucci or Lanvin or Nike, what's the problem here? And we're also gonna be talking about what what are the implications of this case for sneaker customizing? Hello everybody, it is me, Jordan Young, back with another Certified Hood Classic. If you guys are into sneaker related content, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and go ahead and do it for me early on this one. Just hit the like button straight away. Let's get into this. Let's first talk about the two parties involved. We have Dominique Ciambrone, the shoe surgeon, and then we had Goyard Paris. Now, if you guys wanna know a little bit about the shoe surgeon, I actually made a video close to a year ago now talking about this guy and why it is that he hasn't been sued by Nike. And so if you guys wanna go and check that video out, I will link it above. On the other side, we have Goyard Paris. If you guys aren't familiar with Goyard, they are a very high-end luxury designer brand that specialize in luggage and bags. Very expensive, very exclusive stuff. These guys are so snooty that they refuse to sell their stuff online. The only way you can actually buy a Goyard product is to physically go into their retail stores. And speaking to a number of my sneaker customizing friends, they've told me on many occasions throughout the years that if there was one brand, one logo, one trademark that you do not want to mess around with, it's Goyard. And so it is of very little wonder that they have chosen to pursue legal action with the shoe surgeon over these sneakers. A week ago now, Goyard filed a lawsuit against the shoe surgeon for trademark infringement, false designation of origin, unfair competition, and common law trademark infringement. This is with respect to a number of products available on the shoe surgeon website, including these Nike Dunks, as well as these Jordan 1 Lows, as well as some lighters that were made using Goyard materials. Now this case didn't just come out of nowhere. Goyard previously sent cease and desist letters to the shoe surgeon, but received no response. And a year later, the accused products were put back on the market. And so I don't know if the shoe surgeon just thought maybe they've forgotten about us. Maybe we can get away with chucking these back up online again, but he did and we are here. Now, apart from the trademark infringement, which Goyard are accusing the shoe surgeon of, the defendants claim that the accused products are made with Goyard canvas material, but such material is not obtained from Goyard, not provided to defendants with the knowledge or consent of Goyard, and are not verified as genuine by Goyard. So basically, they are intimating here that the materials that the shoe surgeon is using to produce these Goyard Nike sneakers aren't even authentic in themselves. Now, if the shoe surgeon did want to absolve himself of any wrongdoing in this respect, what he would have to do is he would have to essentially provide receipts for Goyard stuff that he has bought, that he has used in order to create these custom sneakers with. If he can't do that, then these guys are going to have an extra claim on their hands. So what do Goyard want? They want the shoe surgeon to send them the remaining inventory of the infringing products for destruction. They're also seeking financial compensation for damages, including up to $2 million per trademark infringed. Wow. In order to break down succinctly just what the crack is when it comes to selling custom sneakers from a legal standpoint, I want to show you guys a video here by Sneaker Legal. So what's the difference between selling shoes that you purchase unaltered from retail versus selling custom shoes? When you purchase a sneaker for $100 from sneakers and you sell it for $200 or $2,000, whatever the market value will bring, you're allowed to do that and you're allowed to sell Nike's trademarks by a doctrine known as the first sale doctrine. Once you materially alter the shoe or customize it in a way that it's materially altered, all bets are off. The first sale doctrine does not apply and you can be charged with trademark infringement. So by adding blood and other areas that materially alter a regular original Nike shoe, you can get charged with infringement. So if you materially alter a sneaker, even if it's for a collab, you would better get Nike's or Reebok's 
permission. Now you might be there thinking, yeah, but hang on, this guy must be legit. He must be above board because he's got collaborations with the likes of Nike or Gucci or Lon Vaughn. So how can he possibly be trademark infringing when he's basically being co-signed at the same time? And the reasons are pretty simple. I went into them in a little bit of depth in the previous video I told you about at the top of the episode. But basically, if the brand is cool with you using their trademarks and their logos and they're happy to co-sign them, they can basically grant you a license. But if you don't obtain a license or you don't get permission from the brand to use their logos, you are opening yourself up for litigation. And because Goyard is so staunch about their brand and their IP and their logo, they're not the types of people that would ever grant any single person a license to use their logos and are the types to come at you in a very robust manner should you infringe on their trademarks. What if he's using authentic Goyard materials and just like cutting them up and repurposing them and essentially upcycling them for the sneaker purposes? Isn't that cool? And the reality is no, it's not cool. You can't just go and hack up a Louis Vuitton bag or a Goyard bag and then make it into something else. That's actually not cool. In order to understand what a trademark infringement is, you need to understand how it occurs. And it occurs when a product is likely to cause confusion among customers as to the source of the goods. And if you look at the shoes in question here, whether it's these Nike Dunk Lows or these Jordan 1 Lows, that have the Goyard canvas print material in them, Goyard's concern is that these Nike Dunks could be seen as some kind of official collaboration between Nike and Goyard. And they wouldn't want to be associated with such a scummy brand. But what about all those designers out there that cut up designer bags to make keychains or hats or jackets or patches or whatever? What about these upcycling designers? Aren't they getting away with the same thing too? And I actually had to look this up, but there was a recent case between between Louis Vuitton and a designer called Sandra Ling. Sandra used to cut up Louis Vuitton bags and repurpose the material for keychains, beanies, jackets, all that sort of stuff. And Louis Vuitton actually took her to court over it. Louis Vuitton argued that consumers are likely to mistakenly believe that the products sold by Ling are authentic Louis Vuitton items or are otherwise authorized or approved by LV. And Ling eventually agreed to a permanent injunction against her use of LV marks on her products and to pay damages to LV in the amount of $603,000. And so the short and the long of it is you can't just go around cutting up designer bags and making sneakers with them unless you have the express license consent of the party whose trademarks you're using. It's simple and there's a legal precedent right there. And so the shoe surgeon is in a little bit of trouble here. I think what's gonna happen is a lot like other cases, he's probably gonna have to end up settling, sending Goyard all of these kicks, having them set them on fire, and then potentially pay them a lot of money. The implications more broadly for the sneaker customization scene is that if someone as big as the shoe surgeon can go down, other smaller operations can certainly get it as well. We've seen over the past year or two, these big companies going after not only sneaker customizers, but also bootleggers, websites selling fakes, even content creators making content about fake sneakers. And so there seems to be a change in the air right now with these big companies looking to protect their IP with a lot more gusto. I for one think it's interesting times. I've got no hate or enmity towards any sneaker customizers out there. I've got nothing but love and respect for what you guys are doing and no hate at all intended towards the shoe surgeon. All I'm doing is just reporting on what we're seeing here. Now, if there are any interesting developments, I will keep you guys updated. If you guys wanna keep up with me in real time, be sure to go over and drop me a follow on the gram as well as on TikTok. And I am starting up a new channel where I'm gonna be talking all about sports. So make sure you guys go and subscribe to my new channel. Thanks as always guys, really appreciate your view and your like, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care for now and peace.